Hello, Carol Taylor Carney here at Powling Arts, and I am with the incredible Julia Hartling, and she's going to tell us about this beautiful piece. Join us. Yes, so um, this piece is called In the Pink Forest, and it was inspired by a vintage photograph that I saw oh, of a cool. um, man and a woman uh, completely tattooed. And um, I like to think, I like humans. I like <laughs> how we are and how we change. And I like to think about how our whole culture changed over time. And when I saw this picture, it was maybe from the beginning of 20th century. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine that it was something very edgy. And they were kind oh, yeah. of on the outskirts, mm -hmm. right? So they were... To, you know, people had tattoos for a very long time, yeah. but this sort of like from from neck to feet. you know feet. Um, I think it was. I mean, I mean, I'm not sure who these people were, but mm -hmm. maybe they were tattoo artists or. But I, I think it was so unusual at yeah, the time. Yeah, I agree. And then I was thinking how now. It's not a big deal. Many people have tattoos. Mm -hmm. And even if your tattoos from top to, you know, people used to be like, oh, if you're a doctor, you can have something hidden. But now <laughs> it's not a big deal. And I just thought about it and how how it's it's really, we look at it and it's so beautiful. And it's a way for people to um talk to others, right, about what they like yeah, and what their aesthetic is. And I just wanted to... Well, it decorates the body. Exactly. And, um, and, and that was one of the things that I found so fascinating looking at this, because on the one hand, they are very ornate in the decoration of body. Their clothes are simple. And then there's this other decoration of the background right. that goes and doesn't exactly tell us where they are. Are they circus performers? Are they in a magical space? And therefore, um, I was looking at it and they were looking right at me to tell me a story. So do you see yourself as a narrative painter or do you see yourself as a portraitist? Hmm. What, 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 what would you, how would you describe a narrative painter? They, they kind of are trying to tell, there's a story yes, embedded, think, directly embedded yes, into their artwork. Yes, but I feel like I'm a narrative painter, but I'm not sure. I like to know there is a story, mm -hmm. but what is that story, yes. right? We're all free to guess, but when you look at it, you're like, oh, how interesting. Um, and actually, now I uh, sometimes you look at your own piece, and as a as a viewer, it's different, right? Mm -hmm. And I see how he's wearing. It was a black and white photo, but mm -hmm. somehow I put I I very it's like this dichotomy that I'm underlying, right? She's yeah. in pink, he's in blue, <laughs> and and you know, and I love to think like now I think about it, and maybe if I painted it now, maybe I would have put them in a different color clothes and. How, how it all changes and transforms all the time. And that's one of the things you really get out of this is this sense of transformational. And that's why I said the word narrative. Because right. this isn't, a, on the one hand, it's a very staid shot, the way that they have, they, they almost look tense. Because it's that, I use that vintage photo, right? Yeah. Because people had to be so... Still, still, yeah, still for a long time, yeah, right? like a minute or something. No smile because it's hard to keep a smile for a long time. But yeah, so well, and also what I think is interesting and very, um, I I love this about this piece is that you have the decorative detail and movement is primarily on them. It really mm -hmm. becomes the story of how these decorative details tell a story about them. That's it's right. almost like the story is written on their bodies. And so you've done this great, um, this great thing where you have kept the background relatively sedate, sedate in um, monochromatics and grays. And then you have the beautiful decorative pink detail, which really draws you to mm -hmm. her dress. And then the rest of the story is them 
Yes. And even the story on their bodies then draws you up to their faces, mm -hmm. which I think is uh, really great in terms of narrative detail. Yeah. So. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but getting into that, I mean, I think one of the hardest things as a person who paints um, is that you were able to place these on them and that they're highly contrasted tattoos and yet they look like they're part of them. They're part of the skin. It doesn't look like they're pasted on. Right. And they really become part of it. their physique. Yeah, they're integrated. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like you drew on top. They feel like that is drawn on their skin. Right. So do you think of them as being drawn on their skin or coming out of them? Like just all of a sudden? I think you know? of them as drawn on their skin. Yes. I just love, um, in general, like this tiny bit, and I love, uh, I have a box of old tattoos. And, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and I think it's its own beautiful, ancient art form, right? It is, right. And sort of I love, because it's sort of, so it's a portrait, that there's a story behind it, there's people, and then I got to play with tiny vignettes and yeah. put them <laughs> on them and think how how they would you know, what would these people have? And, so, you know, some of it is also, as an artist, I like introduce myself. I don't know if this man would have a little owl. I love owls. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to sneak in a, a tiny owl. So, you, you know, having fun is, is really important when you it do is. art. So. And you're doing some beautiful uh, symbology, too, because we have the butterflies, we have the owls, we see different flowers. Is right. that a paw print over here? Oh. I think it's a tiger. Part yeah. of a tiger. Yeah. 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 So we, we, it really feels like we get to know them. And I think there's my dog also. Oh, I know. <laughs> you have to come well, in and see the dog. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, yeah, so. And there's a phrase uh, I think that someone has told me about before. Uh, I think it's an idiom in Italian where when they're talking about something that's very personal, it, the phrase is, it is written, I feel that on in my skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that that is apt for this piece because these are people whose stories are written on their skin, like, right. um, which I think is really interesting because there is something about that turn of phrase that we don't always think of with tattoos that become, you're basically putting your story on your skin and that be your skin and your body become your story. And so it's interesting because they have told their story. Well, you have told their stories in the, the tattooing and then this piece tells a story about them. Absolutely. So but it also tells the story of every person who comes to look at it. Because when I first saw it, um, I loved this book called The Night Circus. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I looked at it and... It has that kind, the kind of light that I imagined was going on in this story that was part history, part fairy tale. Right. And there are there seems to be elements of both of these. So um, what I was going to ask is, is that how or why you came up with the composition? I mean, this they're definitely in some kind of room or space, mm -hmm. and yet it's not. A particular space it's kind of a general space right. but it's particular in the way you decorated it so how did you come up with this idea of what to surround them well so i mean you know this is what i love about art sometimes you plan things and you visualize them in your head. I mean, I know some people sketch and color maybe. Mm -hmm. I usually just sketch, you know, I do line sketch and yeah. and I really wanted to draw. I saw this photo and of course in the photo they're just standing in that studio. There's some mm -hmm. curtain behind them. Mm -hmm. And I love the whole I'm like, oh I'm going to with the tattoo. It's amazing. It's yeah. interesting. I feel these people. And then I painted them, and initially, I think it was just gray, but then it didn't work color-wise, mm -hmm. and I, you know, and I was like, oh, I have to 
put it together. You know, you have to work with color because otherwise it's, they were just kind of drowning in the dark background right. because I thought about sort of a gray curtain. And then I couldn't think uh, sort of plant like design mm -hmm. and it all kind of shimmered. Yeah. It, it was like, oh, well, yes, I, I see it now. Like part of that, I think, is because there is a fantastical, like historical, like um, element to them. Like, are they in a circus? Are right. they performers? Yeah. Where are they? Are they? Because they're also standing in dramatic light, and mm -hmm. so what you would have needed to take a photograph back in the day. Yeah. But by surrounding them with this pink, like plant, like. Um, uh, pattern, you've gone and introduced what you're already kind of feeling, which is that this is some fantastical or like, like almost like a fairy tale. It's telling a story. It has this ambiance and romanticism. Right. And by adding in the pink and adding in this biological element, it enhances the um, romance and mystery and uh, the narrative that's right. there. And I also like to leave it to viewer to think and imagine mm -hmm. and maybe tell me yeah. what they think, right? Because even I like to sometimes look at my art and like, oh, what is this? What was I? <laughs> and what do I keep? You know what I mean? Because, yeah. you, because great, it has a life beyond well, me. Yes. Out and there in like the world. We were talking about earlier that you like to hear what people yes. are thinking when they look at your pieces. And I think that, that you saying you are looking at it and yeah. retelling the story is because that's one of the great things about art, not just that they're a conversation, but also they invite you into this universe yeah. that the artist has created. But in a lot of ways, they've given you the context and then you get to explore what that actually is, which I think that's is right. is really interesting. Mm -hmm. But what I kind of, when I look at this, um, parts of it kind of reminded me of spotlights and things like that or background lights. But it, when I first looked at this, my thing is, is I'd like to spend a little time in your brain. Right. It, it looks like, I mean, it looks like a little adventure in and of itself. Yes, yes. I like to think, in general, when I uh, paint or I have some sort of big project, I think about it for a long time, and I agonize, and I sketch, <laughs> and I look, because I I want to, I, I feel like I want to save something right but what is that I want to say right mm -hmm. it's not just whatever is swirling right. in my head I need to kind of organize it and think about it and and I'm talking to my viewer right yeah right. Telling you're them something yeah exactly. yeah and you're basically this is something that we talk about a lot with composition but just generally thematically with art is you want to the person to engage. That's right. And so you have to think about just like you would with when you meet anyone, you have to think about how you would engage with that person. And so composition in a lot of ways is just you organizing things so you can engage with it. You are. No, absolutely. I think in art, the composition works in a similar way. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. even like even color, every like mm -hmm. all the details work to yeah. do that. So. And yeah, this, you really did that in, in this piece where um, you know, from their direct eye contact to the way that they're standing, they're standing upright. And they're, they're also standing in the same position. Yes, yes. That's great. And, and I'm noticing I'm standing. <laughs> <laughs> you were also but standing. I, know, like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever stand like that, so I no, would not be standing I, like that. <laughs> Your like, sheep. Just like <laughs> No, we're friends. We're yeah. all friends. That's right. And you guys are getting a group portrait. Right. Yeah. Which makes sense. So but it's like you feel safer when... Uh, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. about crossing or people do this. Well, this yeah. means I don't want to talk is to you. Oh, I do that one all the time. Oh, oh. no. Okay. And I'm a talker, so that's the I, worst part. I feel it's more like you hug. Yeah, yeah you hug yourself. Yeah, it's security. Yeah, right, right. So... Yeah. But yeah, this piece is beautiful. Thank you. And I'm so glad it's in the show. Oh, this is great. Thank you so much. It so, was so fun. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I hope everyone comes in and sees this on it through May 14th. 14th. Mother's Day. Yay! Yeah. Perfect <laughs> thing for Mother's Day. I would want it. So. Is that a hint? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.